This video is sponsored by War Thunder. In the 1965 Indo-Pakistani War, majority of combat operations were conducted in the West. But at the time, as you probably know, Pakistan had its detached eastern part, which is today independent nation of Bangladesh. Only a single fighter squadron was deployed there, number 14 squadron equipped with 12 F-86F Sabres. It was located at Tejgaon Air Base, just outside Dhaka. In the West, serious aerial operations began on 1st of September, but in the East, there was no activity until the 7th of that month. Both sides were reluctant to extend the conflict to that region, and the weather in the period was very poor, but Indian Air Force sent a probe attack on Chittagong airfield. The mission comprised of two cameras, and their job was to find if there were any Pakistani combat aircraft there. The bombers belonged to No. 16 Squadron, and they were led by Wing Commander Wilson. Approaching Chittagong at low level at first light, the first camera failed to spot any Pakistani aircraft. Wilson dropped his bombs on the runway and called the second aircraft in. The second camera missed the runway and hit the flight control building. At the same time, a detachment of Indian vampires was sent to attack Jasore. They aborted their attacks because they couldn't see anything through the rain. Some Uragans were launched as well, but they also achieved very little. The previous evening, Pakistani Air Force launched major airstrikes against a number of Indian Air Force bases in the west. Number 14 Squadron in the east was not ordered to attack in the evening, as it was hard to coordinate the strikes to be executed at the same time as in the west. Instead, Sabres in the east were to attack at dawn. Their target was the airbase at Kalaikunda, some 220 miles from Tejgaon. Five F-86 Sabres took off just after 6 am. The flight was led by squadron leader Shabir Hussein. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. You can play it for free on PC or consoles. You can control an unbelievable number of over 2,500 airplanes, helicopters, tanks and ships of 10 major nations, spanning the period between 1920s biplanes all the way to 4th generation fighters. Anyone can afford to play War Thunder. The game itself is free. It will run smoothly, even on low-end PCs, and it doesn't require expensive controllers. The highly detailed, realistic graphics and sound effects will help you immerse yourself in history. I've personally used War Thunder to create a number of my videos, including this one. Join the community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles, because no other game is better suited to military history fans. But instead of listening to me talking about it, why don't you start playing War Thunder for free on your PC, PlayStation or Xbox using my link in the pinned comment or video description. New players or those who haven't played in 6 months will receive a massive bonus pack including premium vehicles rent, an exclusive Eagle of Valor vehicle decorator, 100,000 silver lions and 7 days of premium account. The offer is valid for a limited time only. As it was necessary to fly low the entire time, the Sabres couldn't carry any bombs or rockets. They would rely on their machine guns alone. The Pakistani formation was undetected as it climbed to 2,000 feet to begin their attacks. There was no anti-aircraft fire initially. Just minutes earlier, Indian combat aircraft returned from their unsuccessful sorties over East Pakistan. According to John Fricker's Battle for Pakistan, the Air War of 1965, the Sabre pilots made two passes each and claimed 10 cameras destroyed while five more Canberras and two Hunters were damaged.
Indian side admits losing two Canberras and four Vampires. But even that was a very heavy blow to the Indian Air Force, and the attack was clearly a great success for Pakistan. All five Sabres returned to base without damage. But the Pakistani commanders believed they could achieve even more, and another attack on Kalaikunda was ordered as soon as possible. This time, squadron leader Shabir Hussein wouldn't take part in the attack, and Flight Lieutenant Halim would take the lead. Four Sabres took off at 10.30. This time, they would pass along the coastline south of Kalaikunda, and then attack from the west. Two additional Sabres were launched as decoys, flying at 25,000 feet towards Kolkata. Hopefully, this would draw the attention of Indian caps and enable the strikers to approach their targets unobserved. Indian radars detected a high-flying Sabres approaching the border, and two hunters were scrambled from Dum Dum airfield. The hunters belonging to number 14 squadron were flown by Flight Lieutenant Alfred Cook and Flying Officer Mamgain. Cook and Mamgain climbed to 25,000 feet and were instructed to search for the bogies. This wasn't their first mission that day, as they had previously escorted the unsuccessful vampire mission and flew a combat air patrol. The following account of events is based on Indian sources and recollections of Flight Lieutenant Cook. As you might expect, there are disagreements, but more on that later. The hunter cap was now 120 miles north of Kalaikunda. But the bogies didn't cross the border, and Alfred Cook was getting suspicious, so he inquired the GCI operator if they had any contacts. They reported a brief pickup in Port Canning area, which soon vanished. Cook realized this was probably another strike against Kalaikunda and asked to be vectored towards it. As the permission was granted, the hunter pilots accelerated to 500 knots and began their descent. The Sabre flight arrived at their target and pulled up. One of them remained as the top cover, while others dived and attacked the airbase. But as the Sabres were attacking Kalaikunda, Cook and Mamgain arrived and spotted them. Cook instructed his wingman to go after the single top cover Sabre while he focused on the strafers. Cook dived on the Sabre flown by Flight Lieutenant Halim. He fired a brief burst. Halim observed tracers passing by and turned into Cook. Halim's wingman, Flying Officer Afsal Khan intervened, but Cook pulled up. He inverted his airplane at 3,000 feet and headed for Afzal Khan, who was approaching from below. The two fighters crossed paths. Cook was using vertical maneuvers against the rapidly turning Sabre, as the Hunter had a better thrust-to-weight ratio. But Khan had to dive to regain energy lost in turns, and Cook was following him down, gradually gaining on him. Khan was probably hoping that the hunter pilot might misjudge his dive and hit the ground. Cook indeed came very close. He took his aim and fired at Khan's saber.
The Pakistani jet exploded, but Cook was barely able to pull out of the dive, clipping some vegetation with his wingtip. Flying officer Afzal Khan was killed. Indian Air Force achieved its first kill on the Eastern Front. But as Cook broke away from Khan's saber, he was attacked by Flight Lieutenant Halim and Flight Lieutenant Tariq Habib. Habib fired at Cook, forcing him to break. Habib then dived to regain speed. Cook reversed and followed Habib. He opened fire from 300 yards, closing on the saber. As the hunter's cannon shells were hitting the Habib's saber, the other Pakistani pilot, Halim, was closing on Cook. Halim opened fire. But Cook was aware of Halim's position and he immediately went into a defensive vertical break. Habib retreated towards East Pakistan, trailing smoke. Cook was climbing with Halim following in his saber. The Pakistani jet was unable to reduce the distance and Halim rotated his aircraft down towards the earth and on course towards East Pakistan. Cook followed. Just before the Sabre pilot pulled out of his dive, Cook opened fire, but he was forced to pull up as well. He still achieved hits. Halim was nevertheless able to exit towards Pakistan at full power. Cook was now out of ammunition. He didn't chase Halim, but instead returned towards Kalaikunda airfield, where his wingman Mamgain was engaged in a fight with Pakistani pilot Flight Lieutenant Bashir. Besides having no ammo, Cook's airspeed indicator wasn't working either. Cook dived on Bashir's saber head-on, almost ramming it. The saber pilot broke away and a dogfight between the two developed. Cook ordered his wingman to return to base as he was able to gain a favorable position on the last remaining saber. Bashir was trying to shake off Cook's hunter, but after a while, having seen no gunfire, he realized something was wrong and he escaped towards his home base as well. Cook landed back at Dum Dum airfield on last drops of fuel. He was so exhausted that he was barely able to describe his experience. Only the developed film from his gun camera showed full details at the squadron debrief. And what would any clash between Indian and Pakistani aircraft be without some controversy and disagreement? Pakistani pilot Halim reported having fought no less than nine hunters. But this is generally dismissed even by Pakistanis. For example, the famous Pakistani pilot who participated in this war 
Syed Sajjad Haider, in his book Flight of the Falcon, confirms that there were only two hunters involved in the battle. Furthermore, Indian side claims that Halim in fact ejected from his damaged saber just across the border. This is supposedly confirmed by intercepted radio communications. Pakistani side admits the loss of one saber, that flown by Afzal Khan, and that another saber couldn't be repaired due to lack of spare parts. I was also contacted by the brother of Tariq Habib, one of the Pakistani pilots who says that, according to his research and Tariq's own words, the whole battle played out differently from any official account. For one thing, he says that the first Pakistani attack in which his brother also participated was more devastating than what Indians officially admit, and that it effectively put the Indian Eastern Command out of action for the rest of the war. Second thing is that by the time Kok and Mam Gaind arrived over Kalaikunda, two of the sabers had already disengaged. This means that two Indian hunter pilots were fighting only two Pakistani saber pilots, Tariq Habib and Afzal Khan. Tariq Habib also had a hung tank, which put him at a serious disadvantage fighting alone against two hunters. Tariq Habib stayed away from media and never publicly discussed his experience. He died in 2019. Alfred Cook and his wingman Mamgain were both awarded Veer Chakra awards for their performance in the battle, and many Indian sources refer to it as one of the greatest aerial battles in all Indo-Pakistani wars. Despite the loss of at least one saber, Pakistani sides still had reasons to be satisfied. Their single squadron of sabers managed to destroy no less than eight Indian aircraft in two attacks. Indian Air Force redeployed many of their aircraft from Kalaikunda to safer air bases and conducted no further offensive operations in the east until the end of the war. Pakistani sabers launched some more raids, which might be subjects of some future videos. Let me thank War Thunder for sponsoring the video. Don't forget to use my link in the description or a pinned comment to play the game for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox. New players or those who haven't played in 6 months will receive a massive bonus. It's a limited time offer only, so don't miss it. Thank you for watching. Join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal to keep the channel in business and keep watching Showtime 1-1-2.